Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Mercy Parish um, to this fourth Sunday of Advent. Emmanuel is nearly here. A special welcome to any um, visitors to our parish and also to those that are joining us on Shine TV. Please stand and sing with joy. Indeed, we do gather to celebrate our faith, to celebrate God's love for us, to celebrate that God is in our midst. As we come together, Kitanga o te mātua, o te tamaiti, o te wairua tapu. And the grace and the peace of our God be with you all. Well, good morning, everyone. So good we can gather on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, as Christmas draws ever nearer. We pray that as we acknowledge God's midst, God is in our midst, we pray for God's forgiveness and mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. You pardon the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You guide us on our pilgrim way to your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Kinoi tato. Pour forth, we beseech you, O God, your grace into our hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. The Lord says to his people, You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judea, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. And now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ came into the world. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but body you have prepared for me, a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have, have taken no pleasure. Then I said, As it is written of me in the scrolls of the book, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. When Jesus said, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law, he added. So I have come to do your will. He abolished, abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And is it by God's will that we have been sacrificed? through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfilment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. morning's gospel depicts what I think of as one of the most beautiful, delightful scenes in all the scriptures, a scene of wonderful tenderness, of great joy, as Elizabeth and Mary greet one another. A very human moment, but a deeply profound moment. We are, of course, all familiar with the scene that precedes this. Mary has been visited by the angel Gabriel and given this extraordinary news that she is to bear a child, to bear the one who will be God Most High. Understandably, Mary is bewildered. And it makes sense that being bewildered, the first thing she would do is set off in haste to meet with Elizabeth, who she also knows has had some extraordinary news. And it's in that encounter between these two women that there's an appreciation of what God has done. In a sense, the angel's word has been reinforced. There's a deep experience and understanding that indeed what has been promised has happened. It confirms for Mary, it confirms for Elizabeth what has occurred. But there's another aspect to the gospel that I think is really significant. Whenever we think of Mary, I think we think of that annunciation moment and her willingness to say yes. And we see that as the exemplar of what a disciple is. Someone who can say yes. Yes to what God asks of us. But what Elizabeth delights in is something different. Elizabeth says, blessed are you who believed. Blessed are you that believed that what God was promising would come true. Elizabeth acknowledges and praises the fact that Mary is an exemplar of hope. She's a woman of hope. And isn't hope exactly what we need at this time? Not a she'll be right sort of hope, but a hope that understands that in the depths of the present, in the depths of our life, there is a deeper presence, that there is a life that is moving forward that nothing can stop. And if we reflect back over our Advent journey, it's been the sense of hope that has been at the heart, that where there was barren soil, sprouting up as a tender branch. That when there were obstacles, God enters in 
raises up valleys, brings down mountains. That where there was a sense of abandonment, there's a sense of presence. That in the midst of the struggles and the challenges, God is at work. Because you note that today's gospel, we hone in on a, on a particular tender, beautiful moment of Elizabeth and Mary greeting one another. And in their being present to one another, there's a recognition of this deeper presence. Of course, if we zoomed out, that scene is occurring in a place of oppression, of poverty, of violence. It's not a pleasant environment. But what do we focus on? We focus on that deeper presence, that tender, beautiful moment, knowing that God is with us, that God is in our midst. We pray together our prayer of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We place our trust in God as we pray. The response is Whakaronga mai rā ki a mātou. Whakaronga mai rā ki a mātou. We pray for world and church leaders everywhere that they will care for the most vulnerable among their people. E tāriki. Whakaronga mai rā ki a mātou. We pray that, like Mary, we may have the strength to hear God's call in our lives and be eager to accept the challenge of the gospel. E tariki. We pray for all parents awaiting the birth of a baby, and we pray for our own parents and give thanks for the gift of life which they shared with us. E tariki. We pray for parish communities that through generosity to food banks in the season of Advent, we may be bearers of joy and rejoicing to those who live locally and struggle to have hope. A Tariki. We pray for peace in families in Aotearoa, New Zealand, that children will grow up in a loving, safe, and warm, dry homes where they will thrive. A Tariki. We pray for all those who have died recently, especially Philip Beard, and for those whose anniversaries we remember at this time. May they rejoice in the eternal love of God. A Tariki. Gracious and loving God, we ask of you these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Bless to you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. to you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O God, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, our religious and clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. We pray together as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we greet one another in sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Yes. 
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Could I invite those taking communion to the sack to please come forward. We pray that God bless each of you as you take the body of our Lord to those that cannot join us. And we pray for all our parishioners and all throughout our country who receive Holy Communion at home. Pray that God bless each of us in this Christmas Advent season. Amen. Peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God with your lives. Amen. Amen. Oh, Emmanuel, God is with us now. Oh, Emmanuel.